What is going on, guys? It is Dunk back for another video. Welcome to tonight's ramblings. A couple things we're going to cover is Elizabeth Warren tonight, uh, exchange volume, uh, Bybit disappearing, and uh, I say Elizabeth Warren, I think I did. But let's take a look at some Bitcoin as well. So hopping right on over to it before we get started here. We do all of our trading exclusively over on MXC Global QR code on your screen. Link is in the description. Uh, if you do want to trade along with us, the link to the Discord is below as well. And we'd love to see you over there. So taking a look at some things today, Bitcoin did pretty much exactly what we said it was going to do last night, right? So let's just get a quick recap before we head into uh, some news. So this is pretty much the play here, and I'm going to show you verbatim. So short position right there risk at the top two percent rr or two rr excuse me and that is a 3.89 percent move and we did get that to the t here right and uh over on discord here if we just take a peek at some of the wall so our new indicator that we have the force sensitive did tap in for a full move there we did throw this up uh, after that first print and we looked for some retests here he had a perfect retest re-entry here and uh we smacked it right so if we just go over to the brag wall here this is actually some of the winnings off of that today but mine itself we turned 200 into about 550 uh, with a 60x short and uh turned out really good right uh, we were looking for the retest here. I should have took it, uh, to be completely honest with you. But, you know, we got the debt ceiling thing here coming any second, right? So decision on the debt ceiling news uh, is due any minute, and that could pump markets. And I was just trying to stay out of it, right? Um, although I should have just took the short. It was sitting there waiting for me. Man, look at that dump. We're going to come all the way back down and test the trend line, unfortunately. Uh, not anything at the moment. So we're just sitting pretty kind of waiting for the next move here. Uh, I'm not chasing a fallen candle. It's a good way to get wrecked. Let me make sure I know that lo-fi music's playing from the stream. I think we're good. Uh, but let's cover a little bit about Elizabeth Warren. So I think you're all familiar with the Treasury Secretary here. Senator Elizabeth Warren points to crypto payments as facilitating fentanyl trade in China. So the number of crypto payment transactions associated with Chinese fentanyl brokers increased by 450% just uh, last year alone, said the Massachusetts Center, citing uh, an elliptic report. So, so she's suggesting a link between cryptocurrency payments and companies based in China that provide uh, the precursors for the opioid, opioid fentanyl in May 31st hearing on the U.S. Uh, Senate Banking Committee on China Warren pointed to a report from blockchain analytics firm uh, to suggest a connection between cryptocurrency and illegal drug transactions at Chinese companies. Reported on May 23rd that 90% or roughly 90 Chinese-based Chinese -based firms supply fentanyl uh, precursors were willing to accept payments in cryptocurrencies included Bitcoin, right? So uh, the catch here is they take cash, lady. More cash than crypto, I guarantee it. She just, it's anything, man. Anything to punch down on crypto for some reason for her. Uh, crypto is supposedly banned in China, Warren said, proceeding to cite data from the report. The numbers of crypto transactions associated with Chinese fentanyl brokers increased by 450% just last year alone. Man, only if there was another way to, like, prevent that stuff from coming in the nation, like catch it or cause sanctions or penalize the companies. Uh, today's hearing is about protecting our nation our national and economic security from threats posed by China. We must prevent U.S. tech uh, know-how and financing from enabling these Chinese military and addressing foreign investments that threaten national security. Uh, I'm not going to play this just because of the, the potential. Eh, whatever. Oh, it's two hours long. Yeah, we're not watching that. Uh, hopping back into the article here. Uh, the Massachusetts Senator said that she plans to reduce legislation aimed at addressing some of the regulatory gaps affecting these payments to companies engaged in illegal drug trade. Warren first introduced the Digital 
asset anti-money laundering act in 2022 and suggested an earlier congressional hearing on crypto she was preparing to reintroduce the bill congress has talked about fentanyl long enough we propose to do something to fight back uh, according to the data from National Institutes of Health, in 2021, there were more than 70,000 deaths involved in the overdose of synthetic opioids such as fentanyl in the United States, uh, one of the most high-profile platforms that often facilitate legal drug transactions using crypto payments. Silk Road was shut down in 2013, so uh, 10 years removed from what she's talking about now, um, was sentenced to life in prison. That's all bullshit, too. You guys should jump into that. That's the biggest crock of shit I've ever heard in my life. So Elizabeth Warren talking out of the side of her mouth here again. Uh, it's funny that uh, they talk about 70,000 deaths. Was that just that they cite that as the U.S. alone? Yeah, in the United States. So I guess uh, just deaths. So <laughs> that's a crazy number, right? Uh, especially when we do all these things, you know. Uh, I'm not going to get into politics. Okay, so moving on over here to crypto exchange volume plummets to the lowest monthly level since 2020. Uh, we always say it, right? We're moving into the sideways bear market. And this is kind of where crypto just lulls you to sleep for the next eight to 10 months, right? We just kind of do this on the monthly chart. And then either we catch one more lower low and we just pop out to the upside. Um, but only really the, uh, you know, the synthetic perpetual traders, the longs, the future guys, shorts guys, uh, they quite enjoy the chop, uh, but it's going to be solid DCAing probably through the entire rest of the year here uh, as we maybe slowly trickle downhill to test some of these lower levels. Uh, let's hop back over into that. The monthly crypto exchange volumes are on track to hit their lowest monthly level since October of 2020. The crypto market downturn has resulted in one or more initiative inactive monthly and digital asset trading in years. Uh, monthly cryptocurrency exchange volumes are on track to hit the lowest monthly since October of 2020. So October 2020 was the rate post. Man, that's really, really low. Look at that quick. Here's October. Yeah, so that was the lull, the bear market, right? So that was the very end. We had that drop off in September and then October just fell sideways and then we took off in the bull run. So same kind of thing. So October and really November it started taking off. So we're really not expecting that to happen until about March or February and next year, right? Man, what a day. What a day in the markets, right? Uh, the crypto market doldrums have resulted in one of the most inactive months in the digital trading, digital asset trading in years. Monthly cryptocurrency exchange volumes are on track to hit the lowest monthly level since October. Man, they say that a lot, don't they? With spot volumes across major trading venues just under $424 billion in May. That's a far cry from May of 2020. That was literally the top of the market uh, in May of 2021, which saw a monthly volume of $1.4 So we're about a third, fourth, about a fifth of that right now. And 4.4 trillion, man, we're a far cry from that, respectively, according to block cherry, uh, block data, right? Or the blocks data dashboard. So here is volume. So we can see it's a trend, right? So when you're looking at these things on the monthly overall, and you, we do the same thing in the charts, right? So here's your monthly volume. That's daily. I mean, here's your monthly volume. And it's been slowly just creating bearish divergences the whole way since the top of the market. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so it's all trickling downhill. So hopefully we do get a little bit of a lull and just, you know, lull some people to sleep with this. And then uh, we can just slowly DCA for the next bull run. Okay. Uh, there is some big what ifs there right now. If we do get back into a major bull run just based on economic data, you got to remember, don't fight the Fed. If they start raising rates again, we're not going to we're not going to take off like a bat out of hell. Uh, that is for sure. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, let's see here. So amortization rates. Yeah, I mean, the volume's falling off, right, guys? So just keep that in mind as everyone, these other influencers are screaming, bear market, bear market, or bull market, bull market, bull market. It's going to the moon. The volume doesn't recognize that. Month over month, the volume doesn't recognize that. And all, all these meme coins that people are buying, they're moving money out of one asset into another. They're not injecting more liquidity into the market with this kind of stuff. 
Uh, the beloved Bybit is closing up business in Canada, guys. Uh, crypto exchange Bybit exit Canada, citing recent regulatory developments. Binance recently announced its exit for Canada as well, while Coinbase, Kraken, and Gemini, other among others, stay committed. Uh, if you're pushing out these big guys, man, it's not far be beside you know before these B-rated places. I mean, I would consider Coinbase A, but Kraken and Gemini, I mean, they're B or C-rated exchanges per volume, right? But a Bybit, which you could almost the perpetual chart was just as reliable on Bitcoin as the Binance one. So very two very big exchanges uh, coming out from under the Canadian market. Just being pushed out, man. A socialist communist government out there. So Bybit has announced that it will be exiting the Canadian market starting as soon as May 31st today uh, due to recent regulatory developments uh, in the country, adding to, to several other exchanges that pulled out from the country. Uh, it's always been Bybit's primary objective to operate the business in compliance with all relevant rules and regulations in Canada, the exchange said in a blog yesterday. In light of recent regulatory developments, Bybit has made the difficult but necessary decision to pause the availability of products and services. No new account openings will be available from May 31st, while existing customers will have until July 31st to make uh, new deposits and enter into new contracts. The company said, noting they will be uh, able to withdraw and reduce their positions after the closing date. So, bye bye to Bybit, right? A lot of people love Bybit. Um, I never really got the bug for it. Uh, I was a Femex trader when I started doing uh, futures, and I loved Femex vehemently. And then uh, I ran into MXC, and they really just had about five or six hundred percent more in assets than than uh, Femex, right? So we covered Bybit, we covered the volume on the exchange, we covered this crazy uh, broad Elizabeth Warren. Uh, it's just insane. She's insane, dude. Absolutely, absolutely insane. I was trying to get the House video going here for voting on this bill. And here we go. It is live right now. Can we hear sound there? Yays and nays. Looks like it's going to pass. 12 minutes remaining. We're going to keep an eye on this here, right? Looks like that's going to be just fine. I'm going to snip this and just throw it in Discord quick. Now hop over in Discord, guys. Great resource over here. Uh, looks like this bill will pass, right? So uh, I wonder if Bitcoin's going to have a, a nice reaction in about 12 minutes. Uh, looks like we just purged some liquidity there. This might be a good time to look for a long, actually. So we came down, tapped a $190 million block. Oh, we didn't even tap it. Oh, yeah, we tapped it. That's six minute, man. But uh, let's just recap the measured move, right? So here's where we left you yesterday. We left you with this here, and then we actually had one to the upside, you know, coming out of this area here. And I said they did not look good. You know, typically the trend was dragging us down and went to bed last night, came in and woke up this morning. Shorts were sitting right about here. And then we had one more capitulation down. And I woke up like really early. I was up at 4 a.m. today for work, out of the house by 5. Driving several hours for a meeting and the stop loss hit uh, for a full profit, you know, right at the level here. Okay. That was a beautiful play. Uh, so we're just kind of reassessing now. If we're looking for longs, I think the four hour is probably looking to come up now. Yeah, we're printing divergence on the four hour here. So this could be decent, right? So we got to purge down on liquidity. Four hour. Full. Oh. forming. Well, we got what? 10 minutes on the. Oops, I did that twice. All right. I mean, as far as overall, let's take a look at the daily, right? So daily, we do have this big pool. We're coming down the kind of wick into. This is where we spent that three weeks in almost all of May down here in this liquidity pool. We finally had the jump out of here. And we're coming down to retest it now again. I mean, if I had to guess, I mean, we're going to come down and tag this line. So 26... 
26,500 for support. So all the way back down, we get a bounce. Maybe we lose it one more time. You know, we got to get out of this structure, right? So on the daily here, we're looking at lower lows still. And maybe we just draw a fib in here quick. So top to bottom. So retest came up and hit that 0 0.50 exactly right back into the liquidity pool. Coming down the retest to 236 now. Wick through it once. Wouldn't be surprised if the daily finally drives down through this and then the whole way through this down here, right? So we're looking for this line to break. Let's see how many taps this has. I'm sorry, that sound is still going here. Let's just mute that. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we're coming back up pretty hard here. And here's where we were. Right here. So just a quick peek. So we had that one touch on Mother's Day, Friday the 12th. Uh, we had a second attempt over here on the 25th uh, last week. And we're looking for that third punch, right? So that third time is usually when we break, okay? If we get that break, you know, we're looking for that daily support line to hold us if this daily wedge does not. They're coming down here to find support at 25.5, 25.2 in this liquidity box. Maybe one more bounce towards the upside. And then we finally come down here about 24.5. Uh, hopefully, this is where I want to see the bounce. This is going to be the weekly golden pocket here. And if we get the breakout here, right, you can see this is a daily bull flag. Okay. It's a falling wedge, which is bullish, but it's also a bull flag. So if we take the risk, <clears throat> the measurement of the entire pull here, so top of price action to the bottom of the impulse, and we break it out to the top side here. If we get this breakout and it plays complete, I mean, we're touching, you know, 34, 35. Uh, K Bitcoin, right? And that could potentially be, you know, in August down here, how long that takes to get out here, right? So we're only in May. So we could be trickling downhill for a while here. So the ebbs and flows could be downhill for quite a bit yet. Uh, taking a look at that monthly candle. Go back to the daily here and hop into our monthly chart. That's weekly. Yeah, so our first bearish candle in a while here. So we have our first lower high. Whew, oh gosh. All right, so if we set one more lower low here, so we got to come down and break this. So $23,000 is a very important level right now. So this value rate low on the monthly if we lose 23k and we close a monthly candle a weekly candle a daily candle below that i mean we're heading down to that 16.8 we're retesting that area okay so based on the monthly uh but the good news is we're still above the uh bear or excuse me bull market support band here uh, it looks a little wonky on the monthly. Let's look at it on the weekly. So weekly's actually kind of turning again. Oof. So weekly still bearish, man. We tapped a higher high, so now we got to close above 25.8. So if we close this week lower, I mean, it's going to be bearish structure confirmed, right? Man, that is a, quite the buyback. Look at that. See a peek over here at the White House. Five minutes remaining on this. I'm going to hang out with you until we get that, and then we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, but daily structure-wise, we still just have not had this head and shoulders play out, right? Now, we've talked about this quite a bit on the channel. You know, we got several retests. So we got the shoulder, head, shoulder, and then, you know, typically it's the dump, right? So how do you take those measurements from the neckline here, from the top of price action, you know, down, Know, out the bottom and that's targeting that 22.4 right you can take that a little higher yeah, i mean 22 22.4 if we get that full move down that's how it works so we're closing now below below the 50 week moving average <clears throat> excuse me 50 day moving average on the daily the 50 ma 
Now here's the red line is the MA there. And let's just like, here's how it works, right? So you push the pressure down, you retest, and then you collapse. And you can look at that on any time frame, right? So let's just use the hour, for example, here. All right. So we lost the 50 on the hour, came back up, retested the 50. Let's do all the back to that on the daily. And we retested pretty high, right? So technically, we probably retested the weekly. Two day, three day. And we're not even above it on these days. Oof. We don't even have like a bull cross on. We're just riding that four day MA. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I don't know, guys. But here, look. So pretending the 15 minutes, the daily, this is a little bit more accurate from the play we just had, right? So lose the MA on the 50, break down, retest it, and then we lose it for good, right? And it just comes down. Okay. And you can see the same thing here, just on the 15 minutes. So let's take a peek at this. So shoulder, head, shoulder, dump, you know, recover. Okay, you can see it right there. Head and shoulders padded. Same thing on the daily. Just think how long something on the daily has to play out though, right? So here's the daily chart. We got the retest just like we see on a 15 minute band and now the dump, okay? Just be careful. Uh, we've had some weird things that just kind of pick us up. Um, NVIDIA, right? The NVIDIA chart here, uh, I mean, look at this pump on the NVIDIA. So it's down 5% today. But this pump on the daily, you know, holy cow. Look at this. This was the largest daily. I mean, this is more than one day here. But they have the largest daily volume. Uh, they broke Apple's record, Amazon's record. They're up 192% since October 2022. The AI for them is killing it. But that held the market up on Thursday and Friday. Uh, everything else was tanking. NVIDIA pulled the market back up by their bootstraps. And then on Saturday night, we had that debt deal handshake uh, agreement. And then uh, supposedly this may hold us up a little bit here too. Uh, but I, I'm not I'm not bullish on that. Actually buying the news of the actual debt deal, right? They do that all the time. DXY. I mean, on the daily chart here, looks like we're breaking out, dude. Let's just reset TA here, move drawings. We got a nice rounded bottom on the DXY. This is the dollar. And we're at the top of the channel. So if we break out this channel. Oof. I think we're already broken out, right? Not really. something like that I mean daily looks a little oversold huh doesn't mean it just doesn't turn around and pump not an actual indice oof the red yeah, that's a little better we got so much room on the four hour to the upside and then let's take a look at USDT quick is when USDT goes up, crypto markets fall because people are selling off, right? It looks like we could get a little bit here. Check the trend lines. The rising channel on USDT. The falling volume could indicate a little bit of a buyback, right? We just can't get this retest to work. I feel like I short this. Hmm. Short, long, short, long. Just going to stay out of it. That's it. Let's see if it passed. Yays and nays. I mean, it's passing. Hurry up and vote. Still 100 outstanding.
I don't know how you get away with a no vote. Anyways, that's it. Spending bill passed. Uh, government raises their debt limit. And the money printer probably go borrow, right? But keep in mind that we are trying to... Uh, they're talking about raising rates again, so... They're talking about June meeting being another 0.25 bit rate. But I'm going to leave it there. I've drug you out here about 25 minutes. I'm wasting time trying to get this going here. But hey, I appreciate you hanging out. Hop over in Discord, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the next one. See you guys.